If you've been in development long enough, you've probably heard of Redis. Traditionally known as a cache, this allows you to store data in memory, which can prevent you from having to reach a database. You might want to do this to make your applications very fast or potentially to save money by not having to interact with the database. You can cache any data or even entire web pages. Virtually any heavy hit service is going to use caching. Say for example, Stack Exchange, which aggressively uses caching for basically everything. That's just an obvious example, but I'm sure many of the major applications out there are using caching. Well, Redis reached out to sponsor this channel and gave me the opportunity to explore some of the other capabilities of Redis. What many people don't know is that Redis is actually useful for so much more than just an in-memory cache. All the capabilities are wrapped up nicely in Redis Stack. This is a single product that combines all the Redis capabilities used for modern application development. To get started, you can sign up for Redis Cloud and use my link redis.info slash Caleb200, and this will give you $200 credit that can be used, but there's also a completely free tier that allows you to explore all these capabilities all within the cloud. Using that URL will give you that bonus and it'll also let them know that I sent you their way. So I'd appreciate it if you check it out. Of all the different capabilities, the one I'm most interested in is the ability to use Redis as a persistent data store, essentially a replacement for a database. When using Redis, you don't need to have a separate database layer and this reduces the total number of technologies you need and the amount of expertise needed to make a successful application. Doing this in code is super easy with Redis Ohm, an object mapper that'll take your objects in code and store them in Redis. Now to show you how easy it is to use this, let's go through a quick example that you can also find in their documentation. Here I am in Python, and we define our data structure as classes, so we can have an address and a customer, where a customer has information as well as an address. We can create a customer, and in this case we just assign it to a variable Andrew, we assign values for all of these, including creating a new object for the address, and then we issue dot save on that object. And then here's some additional code that you could use to retrieve data. To say, hey, we want to connect to our cloud Redis instance, we can set an environment variable called Redis ohm URL, and then our connection string. And now we can run our application. However, before this, we can add dot all or dot first to just grab a single instance. Running this, you can see it spits back the primary key right here on line 51, and then the entire object printed out from line 53. Now, if you're using the CLI, you can see this as well with keys asterisk, and you can see I have a bunch of different objects here where the one we just created is this primary key. You can also use Redis Insight, which is a wonderful GUI tool to see this data. So here's an example object where you can expand the different sections for JSON. This will be pretty familiar if you're used to working with objects in JavaScript or dictionaries in Python. Just any standard JSON data can be used for data storage. We're using the cloud Redis. However, if you want to use Redis locally, you can issue the command Redis stack server and that'll run a local host version of Redis. That's just one example of what you can do with Redis Stack. There's a lot of other different things. For example, you can do Redis Search. This is for advanced queries and full text search. There's Redis Graph, which allows you to represent how data is connected and visualize that data in a graph structure. There's Redis Time Series, which is great for data that comes in time and you can easily query for certain time ranges. And there's also Redis Bloom, which introduces features for probability. This can be used for advanced analytics for serving advertisements or helping sell products, making product leaderboards and top selling products and so forth. So that is the introduction to Redis. We're going to continue releasing Redis content in the upcoming weeks, including a crash course, which will show some of the content from this video as well as more content. So be prepared for that. Again, in the meantime, you can give Redis a shot using my link in the description. I challenge you to repeat what I created in this video and let me know if you can get it working. If you're familiar with Redis already, Redis Stack doesn't change any of the functionality, it just wraps everything up nicely in one single application. It's all just Redis Stack now. That's all I have in this video. Thank you for watching, stay tuned, and be sure to subscribe. Peace out.